There we go. First fish of the day. Yes, sir. On the swim jig. 100% uh, gone down the mouth. Well, how's it going, Team TRF? And welcome back to another episode here on the channel. Today, we're gonna teach you guys how to be better at fishing a swim jig. Because let's face it, you're no good at it. So let's talk about it. Now, of course, I don't mean that every single one of you guys at home is bad at throwing a swim jig because I guarantee you that I have a lot of viewers on here that are good at throwing the swim jig. But I just know for myself, the swim jig is one of those techniques that I never really, uh, of course, never mastered, but never really understood and definitely overcomplicated uh, when I was fishing it as a young angler. And so if you guys are, are, are not very familiar with the swim jig, of course, this is a swim jig here by Outcast Tackle. It is a, a jig. And of course, the reason why it's called a swim jig is because it's meant to swim. It's not meant to hop, not meant to to drag it is meant to swim through the water and that is because most swim jigs have a head design that is uh, almost like a very 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 skinny football that's instead of a football jig that's you know positioned like this against the hook positioned like this so it's meant to slip through shallow cover shallow grass wood pads all that kind of stuff really is meant to fish as the name suggests in a swimming fashion and one of the reasons why I think this bait here is so uh, underused, especially in, in a lot of today's youth and in, in, you know, the pond anglers, tournament anglers, is that it is almost too simple that you're confused by it. And I can definitely say when I was young, I didn't exactly know what the purpose of a swim jig was because a spinnerbait, a chatterbait, and a square bill, I felt like all kind of fit the mold for the shallow bluegill shad imitating uh, moving bait. But the more that I fish shallow cover, I realize the swim jig has a huge, huge part in my tackle box. And that is because of several features that we're going to talk about today, mostly being uh, the subtlety of it and the weedlessness. I don't think weedlessness is a word. It might be. The ability for it to not catch in as many weeds. <laughs> so here on the channel, of course, I want to help make you guys better bass anglers with the knowledge that I have acquired over the years. So if you guys are new here, please subscribe to this channel. This instructional is going to be a little different than most of them. Most of my instructionals are sitting down on the boat, and I'd say going forward, about half and half are going to be sitting down, and the other half are going to be standing up. And so the rest of this video, I'm going to be standing up, showing you guys exactly how to work the swim jig, where I like to work it, why I think it works so well, and of course, show you guys how to catch a few bass for yourself. So when looking at this whole little island of lily pads that I have here, basically the, the only four options of lures that you can throw uh, safely, which by safely I mean not getting your hook stuck all the time, in a thing of pads like this is usually a Texas rig, uh, a punch rig, which could fall under the Texas rig umbrella, um, a frog and a swim jig. Oh, and right there, folks, was a fish. Let me go ahead and catch this fish for y'all. And really the only two categories to go after those active fish is a swim jig and a, uh, a frog, usually a, a buzz frog. And the reason why I chose a swim jig and I choose a swim jig a ton in the fall is because when those water temps start cooling down, of course in Texas by cooling down, I mean from you know 95 to 75, that's a good cool down, but elsewhere in the country it may cool down from you know, 75 to, to 65 or 50, that's kind of your fall temperature. Um, when that water temperature starts dropping like that, these fish get a little more active and they want something moving around, but there's certain days like today when the frog bite just doesn't work. It's dead calm, as you guys can see, not a lick of wind out here. It is not overcast, uh, which usually means the fish will be sitting under the pads, but it's also the morning time. So the fish have not really had enough time um, from the nighttime until now to decide to get underneath the pads. So most likely, a lot of these fish are gonna be sitting on the edge, and if they are in the pads, they're not gonna be hunkered down in the, the thickest of the stuff. So that is why I have chosen to fish a swim jig today. Now, I did lose my trailer, dang it. So that is why in these conditions I have picked a swim jig today, is because I've noticed the fish are feeding on, on bait fish and bluegills around these pads, but they do not want the frog, and just because it's fall time, I wanna cover a lot of water, and you cannot cover a lot of water with a Texas rig, it's just, it's not a bait that you can usually work fast. Most of the time, if I'm working fast in the fall or under any sort of cover, it is a swim jig. Now there is that debate between the chatterbait and the swim jig. And I really don't see 
a whole lot of parallels between the two besides the fact they both imitate some sort of bait fish or pan fish and they are moving baits. I think the chatterbait is much more of a reaction bite. This is much more subtle and so in this situation with not much wind, sparse vegetation, I'm probably gonna switch, I'm, I'm probably gonna stick to the swim jig. Uh, also, the weedlessness of the swim jig is much better, if that's even a word. Chatterbait, because it doesn't have a weed guard on it, uh, usually doesn't get through especially pads very well. But on swim jigs, you will almost never get stuck on a pad unless somehow you wrap yourself around the, you know, the stem itself. That's not a bad one. That's not a bad one. Oh my goodness. Get out of there. I had just tried something new and it worked out for me. So I'm gonna explain to you guys exactly what I did. Yes, sir. Here we go. Heck yeah. Second nice bass of the day on the swim jig. And I don't know if you guys could tell this, I might do a little replay on my GoPro, but I literally thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a little bit less action on the retrieve on this one cast. So I cast out there, literally reeled it straight in, gave it a pause, let it sink. Straight in, gave it a pause. And on those paws, as it was, as it was sinking, this nice two and a half pounder came and chunked it. So very, very interesting. That's one thing you have to do with, with really any bait, but especially a bait like a swim jig that the action doesn't necessarily revolve around the jig itself, the jig just provides the bulkness and the weedlessness and of course the big hook. It is usually your skirt and your trailer that provides the action and so this time I actually gave it less action by letting it fall and that is exactly when that fish ate it on the fall, just like a little Diane Bluegill. Interesting, so now I'm gonna adjust my presentation and start doing that more. Gosh, holy smokes. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> I pulled up and all of a sudden my bait was like seven feet to the left. There's another one. Just like I was saying earlier is that as I gave the bait some rest, as I was letting it sit there, is when he ate it. And they're eating it good. I mean, that's, that's how you can tell they want that outcast swim jig. <sighs> they want it so good. It's like the type of good you need pliers for. I don't have pliers. There we go. All right, buddy. Heck yeah. And as always here on the channel, I cannot do what I do without my sponsors. And so the sponsor of today's video is AFCO. This is my fishing clothing company that I work with. They make the shorts that I wear. Am I wearing their underwear? I'm not wearing their underwear today, but they have sick underwear. And then this here is actually the Jason Christie signature hooded sun shirt, SPF 50. Keeps you nice, protected from the sun, and also has a zip up. Not only do I look fly with sunglasses on, you are not getting burnt. And so if you guys want to shop below, Code TRF15 at AFCO.com gets you 15% off. Again, TRF15. So make sure you guys are shopping for some new fishing clothes because you don't want to look like a dolt on the water, do you? No, you don't. No. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. Of course, if you guys enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. That way you guys can join Team TRF. We kind of ran out of uh, good pad space. I think as soon as that sun came up, it kind of shut the shut the bite down in, in general. The, both the topwater bite and the swim jig bite were dead. <clears throat> if you guys learn <clears throat> it is always my goal here on the channel to help you guys learn something and become a better bass fisherman so if you did smash that like button and we'll see you guys in the next episode of trf <laughs>